Hey everyone, it's 10 types, and today I'm talking about Stellar Crown and how good the cards have been so far. This is based on my experience playing with the cards, playing against the cards, and also seeing how well they've done in tournaments, but mostly based on playing, um, as well as my thoughts before. So there are some cards that have definitely surprised me, and then there are cards I haven't played yet. I'll talk about them a little bit. Uh, we'll see. We'll see which of those cards that I haven't played I'll talk about. But I'm just going to start talking about the EXs first. Uh, Venusaur, as well as Blastoise, are reprints, and... Um, when were they originally printed? Were they printed with new regulation marks? Uh, they were not. Okay, so those were reprints. But we have Hydrapple EX. Hydrapple EX, its ability accelerates energy, and then you get to draw some cards. It does heal. The healing... I haven't played... I played with it some. The healing never mattered. I feel like the healing isn't, like... Uh, it doesn't help it much. But <clears throat> it, it's an okay card um, in terms of Japanese tournaments in, within the Limitless database, which is the website I'm using. It has not seen play, but it's not a bad card. It's an okay card. Uh, it's definitely not... It's not like a meta competitive deck, but it's like okay. It's like a, it's like a meme deck. It lacks the firepower to knock out a lot of the top decks, and it is also a stage 2, so it's awkward to set up. Teal Mess Ogre Pondi X is like a really good card. I would not call it a broken card, but it's a very good card, and that's what makes this deck like playable, but... It's mostly an Ogre Pond deck. Honestly, I think in my experience, I attacked with Ogre Pond a lot, but I think I kept playing against Charizard too. So that like isn't a very good example, but it's really a card that is okay because Teal Mesh Ogre Pond EX is like really good, but it's definitely not a particularly strong card. It's not like a card that can't win games, but it's not a particularly good card. Uh, I will talk with the Diplin. This is like okay give me immunity from basics. I played in a video, and I think I had an opportunity to use this. I chose not to, partially because I wasn't sure if it was the best strategy, but also because I wanted to just attack with Hydrapple. But Diplin's okay, certainly, um, but the decks have a lot of gusts as well, so it might not do what you need it to do. But Hydrapple EX is certainly not a strong EX, I'd say. it's There's a lot of bad EXs, but I feel like in terms of... It's not a, it's not a great EX, right? And then, uh, oh, other grass Pokemon I want to quickly mention. I have not played... Cradilly, uh, Lydian, or Movrotar. Well, I haven't played any of the other ones. I guess Eligas is a playable card too, but it's pretty pretty sketchy. Movrotom. Oh, have I played this? I don't know. Someone I played against it a few times, and it's like a disruptive card. It, it's okay. Um, nothing super spectacular, but it's an okay card. Cradilly is um, not very good. It's weird. It can rare candy from multiple different fossils. It can rare candy from the one in the set, which I will talk about a little bit, as well as. Uh, unidentified fossil which is like kind of cool but it doesn't make it good it just means it's a thing it can do it's not like a completely terrible card i don't think um i mean it's pretty bad it's like a, a meme deck that relies on coin flips but it relies on coin flips to be okay if you got lucky it's not like you're a broken deck you're just an okay deck and if you don't get lucky then you can't really do much damage so it's not a completely terrible card but it's certainly not a, a good card either uh, in my very small experience but i'm pretty sure it's kind of bad Right. Then we have Lydian. I have not played this card. Um, it's a card I want to play at some point, but I think it's a cool card. But not like a great card either, but I have not played against it or with it. Salazzle? Oh wait, no, I was going to talk about the EXs. So, what a non... Okay, obviously Greninja EX is not good. Um, it's the third best Greninja EX in standard. Um, Dashbone EX? I have not played with or against this card. I feel like it doesn't have much value. It's a healing card, but you discard all the energies uh, attached to evolutions. And, and that's bad. I mean, at that point, you could turn a scenario. Um, and you also don't have a ton. You have low HP for a stage 1 EX. It's not, like, super terrible for a 2-prizer. You probably have a more vulnerable 2-prizer in play, but it's not a particularly good card. It's not a terrible card, I don't think. And who knows, maybe it'll see play at some point. But right now, it's not like healing is useless. But it's not that important, specifically with Dust Noir, allowing decks like Charizard EX and Dragon Bolt EX to take one-shots. It's like... Well, I don't need to heal if I'm getting one-shotted. So Dash Bunny X is definitely um, it's a mediocre card, and it's not in a good spot in the meta. If it becomes uh, into a better spot in the meta, it could be a solid card, though. Uh, and as I said, I've not played it. Uh, Lucario EX, obviously not very good. Minicham EX, it's whatever. I've played it. Garganacle EX, I do want to play this. I think I played, like, one game. You need, like, dual stage twos. It's really awkward. Like, I played one game, and it was so bad. I just, like, net-decked the list, but it was completely terrible. Um... I think this card has, like, some potential to be, like, a mediocre stage 2, um, maybe a little worse than Hydrapple. 
which is like you know not really not a, certainly not a competitive deck there are like 20 maybe even 30 competitive decks depends how you break them down um certainly not in that tier but like as an an okay fun deck at, at best which is kind of what we're expecting for for a really long time this has a g regulation mark which the other ones have h so this card's like super old and we've been waiting for this card to come out for like a, a year I, I don't know it's been a long time but anyways it's not the best card then there's Mel, uh, Melmetal EX, which is, is really bad. Orthrum EX. I have not played with this. It seems like actually like kind of playable with Matang, but I have not played with it yet, and I haven't seen anyone else play with it. Then Trap Ghost EX, which we'll talk about. Let's talk about all the Stellars now, which we have Lapras EX, Cinderace EX, um, Galvantula EX, and Trap Ghost EX. Lapras EX I have not played with. I have not seen anyone play with it um, in terms of like games against me, but uh, I haven't really seen people play with it in like looking at deck lists and results either it's a it's a pretty bad card it's not like completely unpayable um or unplayable the attack is almost unpayable though the second one the first attack's like really mediocre to underwhelming it just like outclassed by other things but then the second attack is really hard to power up and has honestly like a mediocre upside like if you can do it turn one going second it's good but there's also a chance to miss energies it, it is very good if you get it turn one going second but then you need something to power up and then that means you're probably not powering up like it's just a card that doesn't really work right um i think a lot of people knew that it was kind of like this silly card but it's, it's obviously not the best card but then trap goes cx this is the other basic this card's been really good crown opal i've not really like it's really hard to use if you're like unified beat is really easy to use right so it does solid damage and um also you can be tangy which we'll talk a little about a bit about with bouffalant but um and i'll talk about the stadium i'll talk about that kind of separately with the stadium though but this is a really strong first attack here can't be used time going second which um i guess keeps it balanced a little better i feel like it would have been okay like okay in terms of balance if you could attack turn one going second and also mean that more decks want to go second right now every deck really wants to go first i mean you can get like you have more consistency going second for a lot of decks like like stage two decks are more consistent but also at that point like you're slower and you might just lose the game because of that so i think a lot of decks want to go first at least simply so i do feel like trap Ghost could be a deck that wants to go second but anyways the second attack you can actually use turn one going second but it's pretty awkward glass trumpet has been a card that i've been playing with and it's it's not very fast like i don't know it's just one of those cards where i haven't been able to draw it at the times i need it kind of like mirage gate i feel like like lost zone actually as a whole is a deck where you like miss some of your cards that you need it has a lot of things it can do throughout the course of the game but you can't do them necessarily the turn you want to so crown opal is like not really it's not unusable but it's not super usable either and honestly like in terms of damage unified beatdowns better uh, it does need a big bench but you can certainly get that in your decks aim to do that and then at that point you're not like you want to play double turbo energies and you want to play for that and then if you also want to be able to use crown open now you're playing a bunch of like other stuff a bunch of basic energies like at least six basic energies you're playing at least two of each and then you're playing glass trumpets and that's that's 10 deck slots that you're using up on something that is only useful in certain matchups where those matchups it is quite useful but also then you're not taking knockouts you're not taking one shots so it's still not might not it's not like an auto win against those like you're talking about diplin Diplin's on auto win against the um like raging bolt ex decks because they do have a bunch of gust so well it's it depends but it, like they can potentially gust around all your pokemon and then you just you lose you're not doing enough damage they're one shotting your pokemon you're two shotting all their pokemon so chronopal is good in those matchups and uh can be insane like it one shot squawk ability ex and mu ex and stuff and then you're like immune to a bunch of their attackers or all their attackers depending on what you're up against but i don't think it's quite good enough and this might be the best <laughs> stellar attack the stellar attacks are like kind of bad unfortunately which is really disappointing because that's like the thing that sells the mechanic but anyways Gavantula ex probably has the best cinderace ex and Gavantula ex each use their stellar attack um and their regular attack but Gavantula ex's regular attack is actually pretty solid it's not like amazing or broke oh it's it's pretty good it's it's not like insane because it's not one-shotting like razor bolt ex which i mentioned and there's a good few other basic two prizers, which it's not one-shotting, which is an issue. But if you are one-shotting them, like I played against Maridon, and I just used Charge Web over and over again and just won the game during that. Fulgurite is really awkward. I've gotten, I've seen a lot of comments about it and a lot of talk about it, and um, pretty much everyone kind of agrees 
it's really awkward to stream the attack because it's three different types, which you can kind of do once, twice, maybe three times. But you really need to keep streaming it over and over. You can't break item lock. Otherwise, you are like, then your opponent just plays all their items. It's not like bad if you item lock them for a few turns. You certainly will take that. But it's not as meaningful as if you item lock them the whole game, obviously. But that's something to keep in mind that is very meaningful. And Fulgurite isn't also, it's doing less damage than Charged Web, which might not be enough damage. Not Fulgurite, or, or Charged Web, but Fulgurite certainly isn't always enough. But discarding the energy is just so brutal. It's a deck. Um, I, I don't actually know, like, the best way to play it. You could just play it based on, like, the first attack mostly, but you probably, you might use, like, Class Trumpet with, like, Blissed Yanks. That's how I played it, and that's, like, seemed okay, but very sketchy. And then you can do, like, other combos, but... Um, you're still going to be lacking something. It's a deck that's, or it's a, an attack, the second attack that's pretty awkward. The first attack's okay, but nothing super special. Gavantula EX is definitely, I think it's the second best EX in the set. Um, Trap Ghost EX is obviously the best. And, um, yeah, I think it's pretty clear the second best. It's an okay EX. It's very playable, but it's not like a top tier deck either. It definitely has sketchy elements if you're really pushing for a Fulgurite. Then we have Cinderace EX. This one is, I'd say, the, pretty clearly the third best EX from this set. Um, yeah, so this one's okay. Definitely, um, in my experience, better than Hydrapple EX because you can really take advantage of, like, it's a, it's a stage two deck. Stage twos have certain positives. You have the high HP. Uh, Hydrapple EX does have higher HP, um, but Cinderace EX here has Flare Strike, which can do really high damage. Hydrapple EX isn't really hitting massive damage uh, on turn two. Cinderace EX isn't also that consistent. Cinderace EX isn't a great card, but it does have free retreat. Uh, taking a look at decks, there aren't decks. Um, if you take a look at decks, which are on a different uh, page, then it plays Featherball, which can it can it's the best Featherball use in the game, I, I think. Um, yeah, because you can get Pidgeot EX and Cinderace EX. Decks like um, Cinderace EX with Pidgeot EX can get really good use out of Featherball as like. A better Ultra Ball. Ultra Ball is definitely an issue, discarding two cards sometimes. Um, Garnet Volley is usable, but awkward. You uh, definitely use Sparkling Crystal to use Garnet Volley most of the time, but you do have Darkness Energy, but you can use Monkey Dory. But uh, I, I've just played a few games with the deck. It felt okay. Not like, um, I mean, I think it's pretty, in my experience, pretty clear that the third best EX had Vapel EX, I guess, would be the fourth best EX. Um, Actually, in my experience playing, I found Cinderace EX better than Galvantula EX, but I do think Galvantula EX is better. Cinderace EX is, like, fun, but being a stage 2 <laughs> adds extra issues. Flare Volley, its attack cost is... I mean, I guess it's good, but you probably attach a double turbo, then you drop into 260, which might not be the number you want to hit. But generally, it's a pretty solid Pokemon, but not perfect by any means. Then, um, I believe that's, yeah, that's all the EXs. Then let's talk about the colorless package, the other parts of the Trap Ghost deck. You have Bouffalant, you have Fan Rotom, and you have the Knockdown. I mean, like, Glass Trumpet interacts with colorless stuff, too, but that, that's different. So you have Bouffalant, where you take 100, uh, well, no, let's talk about Fan Rotom first. Uh, I, I love Assault Landing, it's a very fun attack. And very solid into the current metagame with Buddy Buddy Poffin as a very important card in the game, searching out basic uh, 70 HP Pokemon. Or they don't have to be basic. Wait, no, they do have to be basics. Um, and so it allows you to one-shot them. I found in my Trap Ghost EX deck, I played a copy of Jet Energy, and that was super good <clears throat> for specific, very specifically Fan Rotom. And uh, that 70 HP or 70 damage attack can be super good and can win you games. Uh, not like single-handedly, although I actually did like, I think I like three-shotted two Age of Slashes with Fan Rotom, but it does help against like Mimikyu, but Fan Rotom is really good against just different things. I mean, it throws off the prize trade, and some decks, this can essentially win you the game, so Fan Rotom is a really fun card with its attack. Obviously not as the main use, though the main use is the ability of getting your Pokemon it is really nice. Uh, I guess I'll talk about Area Zero Under Depth some here too as well. Eight bench Pokemon with the Terra in play. Um, it like clogs up your bench in kind of weird ways where um, like Area Zero Under Depth does not give you infinite bench space. And before you have the Terra, if you can't get the Terra in play, you need to leave a space open for the Terra before you can play your other basics. So Fan Rotom does have some things you need to watch out for. Uh, that's not just a Fan Rotom thing, but Fan Rotom definitely has that issue. Where you get a bunch of Pokemon, you can't necessarily play them all down. So uh, being able to get your knocked owls is really nice. Nice being able to get Pidgey or Squovit or the Barrel is or no Badoof is really nice. I've not played it with the Barrel Squovit decks, but I have played it with Pidgey. 
uh, in Pidgeot. So being able to get the pitch is just nice. Um, and like it, it helps. You don't run it if you're just running like Pidgeot or like Bavaro Scovid, I don't think. Uh, it does help with Dodrio as well. Uh, his Unzoric Vistar is like okay. It's certainly a solid deck right now. Um, I said there are like 20 viable decks. I, that's that's certainly in that conversation. Same thing with Trapagos. I don't know if 20 is the right number, but somewhere like 15, 20. It's more than a top 10 right now. Um, but you have Fan Rotom to help out those decks. And it is like nice. It's not like you lose if you don't get Fan Rotom or you win if you get it either. It is a nice addition though and can turn hands that are pretty bad into hands that are good. But in order to use Knockdown, which is the, the big thing you're getting, you do need to tear it in, uh, in play and in hand. And Fan Rotom obviously doesn't get that. The Knockdown engine is very good. You, of course, do need a Terra in play, and in some decks, that is an issue. Like, you can't put Knockdown into every deck. It is very good in Trapagos. Knockdown isn't very easy to search. I mean, you, it's not, like, that hard to search, but you have to Ultra Ball for it, so you won't always have it. I feel like Pheasant Nifty EX is really great in Knockdown decks because if you get Iono to, like, a two-card hand and then draw your third card, there's a very good chance you're not getting Knockdown or an out to it. Maybe you just draw the Ultra Ball and you need to discard your entire hand, which just won't work out for you. But um, yeah, I feel like, uh, excuse me, sorry, I'm a little tired. Um, Knocked Owl's ability, it's, it's really good. Uh, it does have some issues. Like in terms of trap cards, it get, doesn't get special energies. It gets essentially Pokemon, uh, which is why you could play Feather Ball within like Trapios or something. But that's, I, I don't think it's good. But Knocked Owl is... You know, it, it's really good for getting most things. It's just not good for getting your special energies, but it can get your tools. I mean, all of your trainers, obviously, they can really get you out your Pokemon as well. So Knockdown really, really helps. Buddy Buddy Poffin as well, being able to search for that. It's like really good trap goes I found because it gets two Pokemon with one search. So you could actually get four Pokemon off of Knockdown, maybe five or six if you do some supporter thing, but... Yeah, Knockdown is a very strong engine, but it does have the issue you do need to like kind of be set up. You need your Knockdown, and then you need your Terra. So there are games where you just never get off the ground and you lose because of it. But it's an engine that's very fun. There are lots of decks that play Terras that aren't playing Knockdown either. You look at stuff like Dragapult and, uh, and Charizard, and in those decks, you don't have a Terra in play early. So... Although Knockdown would be great later on, you're just never going to get off the ground in those types of decks if you're relying on Knockdown because you need like some other Terra and then you need your other basics and it's just a big mess. But then in um, like fast decks as well, like Teal Mass Ogre Pond, Raising Bolt, that deck um, probably doesn't get too much help with the new set. Um, I mean, you can like play the Knockdown engine and the stadium and stuff, but then you're just generally a slower deck. You do have a better late game, which I, I talk about a lot, seeing that deck has a bad late game, and this does help it, but it hurts the early game. I played the uh, Weird Your V Turbo, um, yeah, the Turbo Weird Your V with uh, Ogre Pond and then Clash Temp as well. That deck, Knockdown, was not what you wanted to be playing. I've never found myself really wanting that. The late game's okay but the early game is the most important part i found myself making a lot of cuts to the uh, original list i found a list online and i played other lists like it and i had to cut out a lot of tech cards it like has now an auto loss to any form of wall um i could add in tech cards for walls but once i add in those tech cards the early game power the turn one power is just kind of reduced and if i had knocked out it'd be like drastically reduced so knocked out is not something that belongs in every deck that even could play it but it is a good engine it's like there's a few good engines and and it is one of them though it is you know deck specific but it's not like only specific to one deck you could play in a few decks and then bufalon if you have two bufalon in play your basic colors pokemon takes six less damage from attacks and of course doesn't stack it also does have a usable attack 130 for three colors can't attack next turn i could go into details about the attack and how that is like useful and not useful but we're not here for that right but bufalon is his ability is like good i've not played it with the other bufalon yet or not too much success i played like a couple of games with the other bufalon and a few various decks but uh, i haven't really done much with that but bufalon is it's okay. It's, it's good in Terrapagos, giving you more tankiness, and it's, like, good in the decks it's played in. 60 less damage is quite nice, especially when stacked with Bravery Charm. Any Pokemon that can use Bufflon can also use Bravery Charm, so you can get 
essentially 110 more HP, though it is not 110 more HP. There is Dragapult, yes, in the game, of course, which is placing damage counters, which will be knocking it. How much HP does Hoot Hoot have? No, Hoot Hoot has 70, right? Hoot Hoot, Hoot has 70, but Pidgey has 60, not protecting your Pidgey. Um, so action trap goes, I have like bravery charming my Pidgey, not like all of the time, but certainly some. So it is like nice for tankiness. Tankiness in the current game, like the Pokemon you're putting Bouffant on, like Trap Ghost DX only has 230 HP. That's not like bad, but it's not it's not Charizard DX. You're kind of pushing it to that Charizard DX level. But a deck like Charizard DX, maybe even Dragapult EX can, you know, one shot you with the use of Dust Snor and like Raging Bolt EX can one shot you through just extra stuff. It is harder for them to do, certainly, but um Bouffant is something you want to like I don't know, it's not always quite enough. Also, you don't really start out Bouffant off a of fan Rotom, at least not in my experience with the Trapagos deck, which is the main deck I played these in. So, like, it's not super easy to find. You can't buddy buddy Poffin for it either, of course. So you can nest ball for them, and you can get the Bouffants into play, but they're like lower priority. They're some of the weaker cards, and they just don't always see play because you might prioritize other stuff. And if you got if your opponent bumps area zero under depths you might just discard the two Bouffalons because it takes up two bench slots. And so if you got to discard three Pokemon, maybe four if they play Clap Stadium and they also get rid of your active, you want to save all the spots you can for like meaningful cards so the Bouffalons just get discarded. It's not like it means they're irrelevant cards, but they are not to the same level of, you know, like your Pidgeot or your Trapagos or your Ho Hoots and Knockdown. Well, actually, no, you get rid of the Knockdowns, which is nice. Um, and you get rid of Squawk Billy EX if you're playing that. But, um, you know, Pheasant Nifty EX is really important. So you've got a lot of Pokemon on your bench that you do want to keep around. And Bouffant is what you kind of want, but it's less important than those. So it's an okay card. The two retreat is a bit of a pain in some situations as well. It does depend on what the deck is and what exactly you're playing because... Retreating out a Pheasant Dipty EX for one colorless might be just as bad as Bouffant, uh, Bouffant for two colorless because you might just play double turbos and like switch cards. So, um, like actual switch cards, not rescue, um, is it rescue board. Uh, so, you know, it doesn't matter <laughs> then. Uh, then we have Air Zero Under Depths, Under Depths, though, which is a good stadium. It's definitely a very good stadium. If we take a look at the decks it's played in in a good few different decks and helps out even more what is charizard knocked out i mean so it does help out charizard and dragapult which are both good decks right now uh, dragapult doesn't play it and charizard also really doesn't play it but it does help out those decks which is something you want to consider it doesn't help them out that much um if you want to try to build your deck to be able to get value out but you could but it's not consistently doing that but this is a very good stadium for a lot of decks but not every day like maybe a third of the decks uh, there were certainly decks built to use this stadium, so maybe it's like half the decks right now, but it's not a stadium that's always helping out your opponent a ton, but it is a stadium that's helping you out a bunch. I have not played it in Maridon. I've played against a few Maridon decks that have played this. I don't know exactly how useful it is. They've filled their bench and allows you to do more damage with Vaku V, but also, like, is that really... I don't know, is it, like, better than some other stadium, Academy at Night or Pokestop or something? I, I don't know, but... People do like it in Maridon, apparently. Uh, as I said, just not a Maridon player. But it is a it is a strong support, or a strong stadium because you know more bench Pokemon allows for some crazy combos as well. Uh, there's like the Reggie's combo. There's the Soon Zorak V-Star, which is better with the stadium. I've not really had... I played that deck a few times. I think I've played against it a few times. It still has the consistency issues it had before. But it feels about as consistent as it was before, despite you know, not having the stadium. So... Uh, we're not being not playing Gabe Shaw Bog. You could play Gabe Shaw Bog, but that causes some issues. I mean, you can't hit as much damage uh, if Gabe Shaw Bog isn't playing. Not air zero under depths. So this is a very strong stadium, but don't don't go too crazy with it. Uh, like if you pull off crazy shenanigans, that's like funny, but won't happen that often or consistently. In the uh, Ogre Pond Weird Your V deck, I play a couple of copies of this card, and it helps. And it is something that helps you out through the course of the game but it's not a card you need to win the game and discarding pokemon from your bench like it's whatever right you can you can just discard them you can't have a deck where you always need a pokemon in play even on your opponent's turn because they'll bump the stadium at some point but it is a very good stadium and um 
definitely the best stadium in standard, I gotta assume. Pokestop's good, and um, I don't remember if there's another good stadium. Like, another really, really good stadium. But I do believe this is better than Pokestop. But I don't love Pokestop decks. I feel like that's it's a random card, right? Um, but the yeah, Area Zero Under Depths is definitely a very good stadium, and I feel like it's about what I was expecting and what a lot of other people were expecting it to be. If you're expecting it to be some crazy combo card in standard, it's not quite that, but uh, it does enable some combos. If you want to try them, they're just not consistent. Like the Reggies and, um, I mean, like the Palkia combo, that's not like that crazy. You just like get a bunch of Pokemon in play. But with Zoo and Zorak V-Star, you can just like Gengar a bunch of times. So you can just get three Gengars into play and it's like, oh, that's completely fine. Versus with the other deck, it's like, oh, I have three Gengars in play. Or with without the stadium, it's like, I have three Gengars in play, that's my entire bench, or like half my bench, and now I don't have my attacker in play or something. Um, but yeah, so Gengar is just like the solution to changing out the stadiums. Then we have the supporters. I've not played Lacey. I, I guess it's like kind of okay, but I feel like it's not that good of a supporter. Um, I don't know if I played Kofu. I think I played decks with it in it, but I don't think I've actually played it. It's it's like, it's whatever, right? But the two supporters that are really important are Briere and, Chris, Briere and Crispin. I feel like Briere is like insane specifically in Charizard, where you um, can Dust Noir and Briere the same turn, and that's pretty much something you can always do. Um, well, on the right turn, you can pretty much always do it in a game if things like go okay for you, because you can Dust Noir first or Briere first, and so you can always uh, Briere. So this supporter is insane, I think, but I haven't really gotten hit by it very much, so... I feel like it's a very good supporter. Uh, I, I'm really interested in hearing down below in the comments if people think this supporter is like super good. I feel like it's really good. I haven't I had, like played Charizard much because I just I'm not. It's not like I hate the deck. It's it's fine. It's a, a fun deck, I guess. But there are decks I like more than it, so I haven't really played it. And it's certainly been around a long time um, for the standard decks. So Briar is like I kind of just haven't played very much, but it seems really good. I don't. I'm not. Well, we'll see. And then we have Crispin. This is a card I also haven't played that much. It's like, I guess, good in Dragapult and um, what else? Mostly Dragapult. It's like a cool supporter card. It is good in other decks, though. It is good in like some rogue decks. Briar is like, it's not good in that many rogue decks. It's good in like a few, but only a specific few. Uh, also, it's not very good in... I have not played it in uh, Trapagos. Or have I? Uh, I don't think I have. It, it like Trapagos isn't one-shotting stuff that often. Now, Briar was glitched in live as well, but I've not been hit by the glitch. I haven't actually heard of anyone getting hit. I mean, I've, like, heard, like, down the down the line that people have been hit by uh, the glitch, but I haven't actually heard anyone tell me directly that they've been hit by the glitch, and I believe it is patched by now. Like, Crispin is good. It's only playable on certain decks. Um, you can, like, kind of fit it into decks, but you need to do some weird stuff. So, Crispin is a solid supporter. I, I think it is good... For its energy acceleration, it's a supporter that doesn't draw cards, or uh, or bo it's not boss either. So those are like what you're looking for in supporters generally. But it's a good supporter. It's not a broken supporter, I don't think. But it's a supporter. I think I underrated a little bit. I mean, I thought it was going to be good, but I think it might be. I guess it is better, but then Briar. I've been like, I mean, it, you can play it more, right? Briar, you can only play on certain um, turns, and Crispin, you can play pretty much whenever. And I've definitely been hit by this, like, I've been caught off guard by it, but that's also, like, my fault. Like, I just haven't really been expecting Crispin that much, like, I just kind of forget about it, but it is certainly a very solid supporter card, specifically for Dragapult, but it's not, like, the thing that makes Dragapult good. The thing that makes Dragapult good, other than it just being a really strong attacker, is Sparkling Crystal. This is really good in, specifically Dragapult. Um, you can do some other combos with it, but... They're, like, kind of sketchy. <laughs> so it, it's it's mostly a Dragapult card. Uh, I mean, it might see play with the... If you ever want to use a Stellar Attack, you also need to use this. So Cinderace EX and... Um, and what's it? Galvantula EX are also going to be using... I guess if you're playing Lapras EX, you'd also use it. But I'm not playing Lapras EX. But, yeah. I mean, this... Um, oh, wait. There we go. No, where, where is Sparkling Crystal? Oh, it's in a new tab. Anyways. Uh, so Sparkling Crystal. It is a very strong tool card... And um, it's good. I think it's a solid A spec. It is obviously competing with some other A specs. I think uh, this card and New Opera NG like kind of fight with each other, which is kind of annoying. Like uh, New Opera NG is like pretty niche, and then now like Sparkling Crystal kind of outclasses it. They're it, they're different cards, but in terms of their use cases, they're they're pretty similar, which is kind of kind of awkward. So 
the Sparkling Crystal, though, is definitely a strong tool. Um, I might have overrated it a little bit coming into the set. I mean, it is very good, though. Um, I think the, like, other combos and stuff we'll see later on. It's just an objectively very good card. If you've seen counter gain stuff going on, that card's really good. That is not an A-spec, but um, it is less, like, versatile. Like, well, that's not really... It is more versatile, but in terms of... Um, what it does, it's, I mean, it's obviously worse, right? It's not an A-spec, but it only does colorless um, attack cost, reduces that. So Sparkling Crystal can allow for some really crazy combos. It also can be, like, in Dragapult, where it's, like, a bit more tame. And then even more tame in a deck like Greninja EX, where it just, like, allows you, attack a li uh, allows you to attack a little bit easier. The other two A-specs, uh, Deluxe Bomb, I've, I've not played with this card. Um, I, I think it's, like, kind of okay, but not that good. Not too much to say about it. Then Grand Tree. Uh, I've not played with this. I don't think I've played against this um, A spec either. I feel like it's not that good. I mean, it's not a bad A spec, but I've never been in situations where I've been like, I really want Grand Tree. Um, I, I'm, I've said it before. I'll say it again. I feel like it's rare candy, but it's a stadium and it's an A spec, which is bad. There are a lot of really good A specs in the metagame right now, specifically Prime Catcher, and then I've seen Unfair Stamp in a few more decks as well. I mean, it's not like it hadn't seen play before, but I feel like it's seeing even more play now. So those two are really good A specs, and uh, Secret Box is good, though not in the decks. I think Grand Tree is good, and Secret Box is not my favorite A spec. Um, I don't know what it is, but it's not it's not um, Secret Box, but it might be like Unfair Stamp or, or Prime Catch. I mean, Prime Catch is really good. So you got to ask for every A spec, is it like, is this better than Prime Catcher? And I feel like the answer is no. They're not really comparable at all, but... Grand Tree just provides minor value, and it's not like stadiums are easy to search out either. Like you can't really search them out. There are ways to do it, but it's harder than like tools and items, honestly. So, so I don't think it's a very good A spec. It's like it's better than Deluxe. Like there's a clear order of the A spec. Sparkling Crystal's the best. Grand Tree, then Deluxe Bomb for these three. But um, I don't know. I, I feel like Grand Tree's not that good. I haven't played with it, but I haven't played against it. I haven't seen that many lists playing with it. But if you played with it, tell me down below. How good is it? How much have you liked it? Has it been like a game saver? Or has it just been like, okay? But yeah. Um, then a few other cards we need to talk about. Antique Root Fossil. I've just been messing around with this card a little bit. Um, it is like a fossil. So you like play it like a Pokemon, but it's not a Pokemon. What well, is a Pokemon in play? It is weird. Um, but then it um, increases your opponent's basic Pokemon in the active attack cost by one colorless, which is, like, good. I, I mean, it's like um, Pokemon League HQ, but it's, it's a fossil. It, I don't know. It's a weird card. I think it is a val like a valid card in control. I've not played it too much. I played a little bit of control. My decks have been super terrible, but I feel like it's an okay card. Definitely a card that I feel like could have solid value in some matchups. It's not like a great card, but it's not a card I've seen played or talked about at all either. Glass Trumpet, I didn't talk about this yet. I said it was like a little hard to find, like in the early game. I mean, you're like doing other things, then Glass Trumpet just kind of gets forgotten about. It's a card that is solid, and I mean, in that weird V deck, this card is insane, and it just like, I mean, it's like plus 80 damage, which is insane. But um, in general, I feel like it's it's an okay card. Not a bad card by any means, but looking at the uh, Japanese decks that play it, it's like one of in Palkia. I guess it's like a good one of in Palkia, but it's not like, I mean, it's just a one of in the deck. And for your secondary attacker, which you're not going to be attacking with that often, like, it's not that good of a card. And um, you could play it in Ogre Pond Raging Bolt, where it is, you know, th theoretically plus 140 damage, which is insane. But also, like, I mean, it's, it's a one of in this deck, too, um, from what I've seen. And then. You could, of course, play it in Trap Ghost, which we don't see here at all, unless I'm missing it. Well, we saw it with Palkia, yeah, but not just Trap Ghost. And then you could do some, like, fun combo-y things, but it's not that good of a card. I mean, it's a good card. I think it will be a card that could end up seeing a ton of play, but there aren't really any cards in the game right now that won it. Outside of Weird Review, which I actually do think is a legit deck. Um, I wasn't expecting it when I played it, but I do think it is in, like, I said the top 20. I think it is in the, like, top 20 a deck, decks that can be competitive. Then there is Gravity Gemstone. I think the last... Are there other Pokemon? There might be some other Pokemon that I want to talk about. But Gravity Gemstone, increasing the retreat cost of both actives. I don't think I've ever had a situation where it's increased the attack cost of my own, where I've, like, or where it's like mattered on the Pokemon it's attached to for that Pokemon. I mean, you're choosing where you attach it, so it shouldn't really matter. But that is a thing. But um, yeah, no, it's, it's a solid card, allowing for some fun combo things. But it's also not a... Um, 
it's not a great card. I think it's an okay tool, but um, for some reason, a lot of people are playing it, and I feel like it hasn't really impacted games I played at all. There have been some games where I cut it, and it's like, oh, maybe it could be good, but or games where my opponent hasn't played it, I'm like, maybe it could have been good here, but I think, like, because it can be used for Dragapult to trap stuff and do some combos, but then my opponent's, like, I've done it, and, then my, and I've been like, oh, it could have been nice if I had Gravity Gemstone. And then they just, like, play a switch, and it's like, well, I guess that didn't matter, so... It's not a useless tool, and it is good in control as well. I think it is a very good card in control, but um, overall, it, it's just a it's a mediocre card. Um, not a bad card, but it's okay. Then, what other cards are there? There's Raging Bolt. This card's uh, okay, I, I guess. Um, Arcaladon. Um, it's not very good right now, but will be good in the future. Um, I think. I think it'll be like a solid card. Clink Clang. It's I don't know. I mean, it's not very good. Uh, not terrible. I mean, you could play it. I mentioned Orthorm EX. Uh, Mill Metal, I've heard a few people talking about this card. I think like it could be okay, but it just doesn't really have a spot in the format right now. Uh, what else is for it? I'm not going to talk about these Dark Pokemon, Darkness Pokemon. Uh, Dancy, I guess, is like a solid Karen to Lugia, but I don't know. I mean, I haven't seen that much of Lugia. It is a deck that people play, and it's like an okay counter. Then you have Rhyperior. I have not played this card yet. I want to play this card, but I don't know how to play it. I might do it with, like, um, Reverse Energy and, like, Dust Noir or something. I, I don't know. It seems like a fun card, but I have not played it yet. Then uh, Marowak is a uh, solid... Uh, is it, I don't know. I haven't played this deck. It's like a weird little uh, rogue meme deck st style thing with the uh, Cubone from 151. So that is, like, a thing, but, you know, it is what it is. The same thing with Drift Plane, that's like a silly meme deck. I think it's pretty bad, but um, it is a funny meme deck. Then there is Iron Boulder. Uh, I have not played this card. Seems like it could have some use cases, but not nothing special. Comfy uh, is definitely a card that is okay. I was not expecting it to be like anything particularly special, um, but it can be like a better Chew EX in certain like in control decks to allow you to deck your opponent out because there are games where your opponent's like you know they're down to three cards and now you can just say oh you draw three i win so it's like that type of thing it doesn't you know it's pretty useless in, in every other situation because forcing your opponent to draw three cards you're like oh i got three extra cards let's go and then drawing three cards for yourself is like moderately useful but as I said, giving three cards to your opponent for that case that's like not good so it's not providing that like mid-game bill, which Chew EX can. That's more of a Hail Mary play with Chew EX. It's a low HP two prizer, and only milling two random cards is pretty bad. But um it can be good for certain situations, which Comfy can't do. But I think Comfy might be better than Chew EX. I definitely think it has a case and is a better type because fire like it doesn't provide too much value. It does provide radiant Charizard, but Blood Moon Ursaluna EX, in my opinion, is better than Radiant Charizard in, in most situations, uh, within control at the very least, because of its high HP. That is a card which could use Bouffant. I have not played it with that, but that could be cool. Then Slowking. I've not really played much Slowking. It's, like, okay. Um, I feel like it's a deck that is um, not, you know, a competitive deck, because uh, it doesn't really work very well. It doesn't really set up. I played a few games, and... It's pretty sketchy. It's pretty bad. I played a game against a regular guard for, and it was it was rough. I just wasn't really able to do anything. The tournament played Manaphy, so I couldn't cure him, and then I wasn't really able to. Um, I mean, obviously, at best they're trading. Um, we're trading evenly. I guess we could like get a gust on the guard for EX, and they can miss that, but that's like not gonna happen. And so, I mean, I like missed an attack once, and it's an evolution, and it was just really really awkward. And I've just just lost. It was like I was down by a few prizes by the end, and just you know just lost. Um, so it's not it's like worse than guard for EX. You can catch people off guard without like mana fee, I guess, with like Kiram, which is like a thing, but it's pretty awkward to do. Then um, what else is there? Token Mar I've not played. Uh, Charger Bug I've, I've also not played. I feel like they're both like not very good. Um, the Vikable deck like could be kind of funny. Uh, Joltek's okay. I, I don't know. I'm not a big fan of Joltek. I guess I could have talked about this before. Accelerating energy on the attack. It's, like, solid. I mean, you could play it in um, Ujima Ogrepan, and it is nice in Gavanchella EX, but um, I feel like Joltek's just, like, um, it's okay. Its HP is so low. That's, like, really bad. 30 HP, obviously, is getting one-shotted by pretty much anything in the entire game, even, like, weird things. It's getting double one-shotted by Dragapult EX, so Gavanchella... Wait, is there another Joltek? Um, I don't, I don't think there's, oh, I, I misspelled it. Um, s let me see. Oh, there, there is, there are a few with 40 HP. Wow, there's a lot of Joltex in Standard. Oh, I forgot there was two, like, 
<laughs> um, like fancy arts. Uh, it could actually be worth playing one with 40 HP. The 30 HP one's really good, but 40 HP, like you're not getting absolutely memed by Dragapult. They're still getting eaten alive, I imagine. So maybe it's not really worth anything, but Dragapult's arguably the best deck in the game right now. I feel like it probably, I mean, Charizard is also really good, but I mean, there was a lot of really good decks, but uh, Charizard and Dragapult are like super good. And Dragapult, just obliterates Joltik, so that's why I don't like it. And I kept seeing Joltik whenever, or seeing Dragapult when I was playing Joltik. Then uh, Veluza and Krabonnable obviously aren't great. They're kind of bad. They're like silly meme decks. Um, there might be some use cases of them in the future. There's the new Ace spec as well, which could make them okay, but not that good, I don't think. Then Dreadnought is like a stall card. And this is like a card that, I, I don't know, I feel like it could be okay. I wish it either... Like, I wish its range where it could take damage just was a little different. Maybe, you know, moved up or moved down. I, I don't know. I, I feel like it's um just not quite good enough. Like, I feel like um, decks are just going to be one-shotting you. I, I don't know. That's just kind of what I feel like is going to happen. And so, I feel like like against Charizard early game, they're just one-shotting you. Dragapult EX. Maybe it's okay. Maybe this card's okay. I've not really used it much. It seems kind of fun, but also I feel like it's just not good enough i don't know uh, if any of you have played dreadnought tell me down below um i think i played it as like a one one line in some like weird control box so i tried out a lot of the new control cards and i, I never gotten to play uh, and then the last card we're talking about is salazzle this is a card that i just haven't found use for yet i've played it only a few games and a few different decks but it's an okay card you really need your deck not necessarily built to like completely built around it but certainly decently built around it you need turn two to have a switch and the double turbo energy and the energy. All right, no, and the, the evolution. It could be two basic energy attachments as well, which is certainly something you can do. Or it could be a, a reversal and a reversal deck. But I think Salazzle is a card with serious potential, but I just haven't gotten it to work yet. But it is a card that I would watch out for. I feel like this Rosic Machination thing isn't very good. I feel like you use Salazzle if your opponent is down to a three card hand because they play in a way which is greedy but they will also see Salazzle coming you could do Thornton but at that point I mean I feel like that's not going to work you could I feel like then like Zorsic's like Machination works as well as Thornton so um Salazzle and, and they are different cards but um they still may see the Thornton play coming as well but yeah Salandit is like a card that's just your opponent's going to see it and they might be like okay I'm not going to like get my hand down to three cards so I don't like lose the game next turn which isn't that hard to do you could just like not play like not thin your hand of a nest ball or something i feel like you can definitely not have you can have like more than three cards pretty easily in most situations and not like be drastically compromising your situation and then the player playing salazzle is like okay i gotta completely shift strategies i don't think it's a terrible card but i don't think it's i don't know it's okay i think it's a fun card well it's, i don't think it's a fun card. i think it's a like a card i want to kind of try to work with it i don't think it's a fun card to play against but yeah, it only works if they have three cards and three or cards in a lesser hand either, uh, or as well. Um, so if they have like four, yes, them discarding three is definitely going to be difficult for them, but it's something they can certainly recover from. I gotta assume. Well, there is also a counter card to this, but um, that's like stupid. <laughs> uh, there's the oh, it's counters to Rosic machinations too, but it's the Amoongus, which is a funny card, but it's pretty terrible. Anyways, um, I'm really excited about this set. I feel like it's been fun so far. I'm excited to play it more as well. We're getting a new set soon as well. There's like a ton of stuff happening happening in the Pokemon DCG right now. This pocket, which is just insane, but I'm, I'm really hyped for it. But anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video. Consider liking, subscribing, hitting the bell, all that good stuff. And as always, I'm excited to see you in the next video.